Starting a nonprofit on a budget is a challenge. So in this video, I'm going to share an updated list of some free resources or tools that you can use to help grow your fundraising, your marketing, your project management, all of these things important to help your organization thrive at this early stage. I really hope that this helps you out, whether you are in that startup phase or you're an established nonprofit just looking for some good deals. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Amber Melanie Smith, a social impact YouTuber and nonprofit founder and social entrepreneur. I love to help other change makers figure out how to make a social impact, whether that's through starting a nonprofit, raising money for causes you care about, or all sorts of other ways you can make an impact. I hope that this video is useful to you. I have a newsletter where I send out tips, strategies, and funding opportunities to folks in this social impact space. You can find the link to subscribe to that below. And of course, check out my hundreds, over 200 <laughs> videos on topics related to these subjects all across my channel. And I'm sure there's something that will give you some help no matter where you are in this whole process. All right, we're gonna jump right in here. I did a video on some free resources a couple of years ago, so you can check that out. But like I said, I wanted to do an updated version because there's always new stuff coming out that's helpful. For each of the things that I'm going to list, I'm gonna tell you sort of the category that it falls under and how it might help you out. And just in case this was a question, none of the resources that I'm about to list None of them are sponsoring this video. These are just tools that I've come across and have thought might be helpful to others. All right, the first tool I'm gonna talk about is really helpful for programming for nonprofits, especially program evaluation, and it is SurveyMonkey. Uh, they do have a free version, and this can help you get feedback and measure the results, especially at those early stages. You know it's really important to get metrics on how your programs are doing and get uh, uh, customer or client feedback on how happy they are with the programs that you are offering to help the community. SurveyMonkey is a tool that you can use to start collecting that feedback. They do have a, a paid version, of course, as well, but um, you know you can get so far with the free version as well. Yeah, I think that with their free version, you can do like up to 10 questions on your surveys um, and you can have multiple surveys. So 10 questions will get you pretty far if you know how to structure your survey well. The next handful, <clears throat> excuse me, the next handful of free resources I'm going to share are under the category of donor management or fundraising. So very important, of course. The first one is Benevolist. <clears throat> now this is a brand new platform that I think just came out actually in the last couple of months, maybe sometime in the last year, at least. Um, <clears throat> the idea behind Benevolist is it allows you to create a wish list for supplies under multiple platforms. So you know you could do um, an Amazon wish list for your nonprofit. You could do like a Target wish list for your nonprofit or a Walmart wish list for your nonprofit. But what if you need many items from all of these different places? Enter Benevolist. The whole idea here is that it can sync up to all these different platforms. So you can just have one page, one wish list where everything you need is uh, displayed on that one page. Benevolist. I'll, and I'm going to leave the um, the links to all of these below as well. So that's for in-kind or material goods, but what if you wanna raise cash? Rally Up, um, It's they've been a past sponsor of my channel before, they're not sponsoring this video, but I am a, a fan of theirs. I've used their platform personally for a long time. Um, Rally Up is a great resource. You can do crowdfunding through Rally Up, you can do peer-to-peer, -peer. you can do events, I think you can even do auctions. Um, but the way that they work is you can have a free version, but then ask your donors to give the platform a tip, and that's how they would pay for the free version for your nonprofit to use. Um, and there's, of course, always like transaction fees that come with the payment processors that are attached to these sites. That's pretty unavoidable, um, but you know it's worth it to maybe not have to pay for the software upfront. Zephy is another donor uh, fundraising platform um, that 
has come onto my radar. Um, this one bills itself as great for small or medium sized organizations. They say that they're free, 100% free is what they say on their website. Um, and they have some additional tools like uh, memberships or subscription, subscription based fundraising. They can do some uh, reporting and a little bit of analytics for you. Um, so I think similar to Rally Up, their business model is, is based on uh, accepting tips from donors. Um, and of course, again, the transaction fee that is inevitable through their payment processing platform. Um, so Zephy with a Z, another one to check out too. Donor Box is another fundraising tool. Um, this one has some good features for the free level. Uh, you can do, um, you know, the, the payment collection, the forms. Um, I think for things like events, that's one of the more advanced features that might require a, a different um, platform fee. Um, but you know, they have all their pricing levels on their website, so you can get the free version. Um, and uh, it's good for donor communications, messaging, you know, marketing stuff to the donors that are in your database on DonorBox. So that's one advantage that that platform has. Giving Fuel is another fundraising platform I'll include in this list. Um, one of the features that they say makes them stand out is just how customizable their pages are. So I'm imagining the, the appearance um, of your pages can be really branded to your cause. Um, they do have a like approximately a 5% transaction fee for the the donations um, and you know you you get the basic stuff you know like the donor management and all that and the donation pages um, they sometimes have a deal or a discount or even like a free trial I think I saw on their on their site just recently that that you can get a three month uh, free trial of some of their more advanced features like texting to give. So something to think about too. Like I said, with all of these, just do your research on the transaction fees and do the math and figure out what's gonna be the best return on investment for you. If you're starting out and you don't have many or any donors, in the beginning at all. Um, <laughs> transaction fees might not be something you're very concerned about, but as you get to higher volumes, it can add up. All right, the next category is all about communicating and collaborating, especially with your team, which if you're a startup could just be you and your board or you and an awesome team of volunteers. Whatever the case, you need ways to communicate. So an, a great tool that's been around for a while, but I hadn't mentioned in the previous video is Slack. Um, you know, if you haven't used it before, it's like chat based and you can tag each other and have different like rooms and categories for different topics and stuff. So it's a good way to um, stay in touch uh, if, you know, email is not, you know, your jam, something, something that you want to, um, you know, have a full inbox for Slack might be um, a good alternative to that. The other one here is Trello. Um, it's one of those project management tools um, that I first discovered from a friend who was building a website a long time ago. So he introduced me to Trello and um, the idea here is you can manage your tasks, like figure out what your priorities are for the things that you need to do, coordinate with your team. A tool like this project management tool would have been really helpful to me. I know starting early on in my organization because uh, I would just make these extensive, sometimes handwritten to-do lists. And that's not necessarily the best way to figure out where everyone is, what their status is on various tasks. So Trello is a possible tool for that. Um, I think with the free version of that, you can do uh, up to 10 different boards. Um, and keep track of like due dates for different tasks and stuff like that. Um, but I think that there's also a discounted rate for nonprofits if you want to use some of the more advanced features. For file sharing, um, Dropbox is a good solution. They have a free version up to, I think, two gigabytes um, for, for anyone, I think. Um, and then there might be discounts on nonprofit versions for more advanced or to have more file storage space. Um, but this is helpful if you have a lot of media you need to store. Let's say you are really focusing on a marketing strategy that has a lot of video or photos. You need a place to store all that stuff, so Dropbox's free version might be a good starter place for you. All right, let's talk about a couple of marketing tools for you. Google Ad Grants, Google AdWords, um, offers 
think it's $10,000 worth of free advertising through Google, through its Google Ad Grants program for nonprofits. Um, I have had my organization use this in the past, which was very helpful, and we're gonna be using it again in the future. Um, it does, there, there might be a learning curve. This is, the, <laughs> this is the one downside. If you don't have someone on your team who kind of knows how to navigate how to do the, um, the ad grant, it might be a little bit of a learning curve. Um, you know, if you're tech savvy and you wanna try to figure it out, I'm sure you can too, but uh, that would be one downside. But, um, you know, it's really important, especially at an early stage, to be able to be found by people looking for your cause in your area. So anything you can do to boost your rankings on Google and be more visible when people type something relevant in the search and there's internet search um, is going to be a great strategy in your early stages when you're still trying to get your brand out there. For photos, I have really enjoyed using Pexels. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's P-E-X-E-L-S. And sometimes you just need a good stock photo if you're doing a presentation or you want to um, supplement some of your, uh, <laughs> your amateur photography <laughs> for your nonprofit on your website. Pexels has been a good resource. Um, it's nice if you can credit the photographer to, uh, off, always credit your photographer, but I mean like it gives you an option to like tag them in a social media post and stuff when you use one of their photos. Um, but if you need free stock or sometimes they have some good video uh, footage on there too, some stock video footage for your video, for your marketing, for your social media, that might be a good resource for you. And then going back to the Google suite, Google Forms is I think an underestimated asset. <laughs> um, you can do a lot with Google Forms. You can collect volunteer interest. You can start building a rudimentary mailing list if you don't have another tool that you'd prefer to use. Um, you can do some of the basic survey collection, though unlike SurveyMonkey, Google Forms does not have any kind of survey analytics or it doesn't create like, it creates some charts, but they're not as pretty in my opinion as the SurveyMonkey ones. Um, so it's a, it's a great starter tool to collect interest from people who wanna engage with you. Um, you can even collect, uh, I think, files, like if someone wants to submit a photo or a document, you could do that through Google Forms as well. All right, if you wanna DIY your website, your nonprofit website, Wix and WordPress are still great tools for you. Um, use, utilizing their content building features uh, is free, but of course, remember, you'll still have to pay for the domain that you use for your nonprofit and hosting that. Uh, website as well. But if you have just enough technical or design skill to um, try to make the website yourself, which, hey, I'm all for. I, I did that for my first couple of websites for my organization. Um, can't promise they were beautiful, but they were, you know, they got us by. Um, go for it. These are some great tools to help start you out. Going back to sort of collaboration and also some graphic design uh, category stuff here. Um, Back to the Google Suite. You know, Google Forms is just one of many features that Google offers for nonprofits. Um, they have Google Docs, one of my personal favorites, spreadsheets, etc. cetera. Um, you really can collaborate pretty easily with your team on these. Um, nothing is more annoying to me. Let me take that back. There are some things more annoying to me, but it's, it's annoying to me when, um, someone is like constantly uploading a new document version to make edits on, like just use the one, just use Google Docs, it's fine. Or another, you know, uh, online cloud-based collaboration document, but like just stop uploading new files, Susie. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have someone named Susie. Um, so great tool. And if you're a nonprofit, you can get some of these more uh, advanced business features um, from Google for free. And then last but not least, I mentioned this in my past video, I think, but it's worth mentioning again because it's been so helpful to me and my team, and that's Canva. The Canva, you can get the pro version of Canva for free as a nonprofit. And with the pro version, you can do all sorts of cool things. You can have um, files and folders where you're storing your branded assets as a nonprofit. You can remove the background of images so you can make it 
seem like you're popping out on the screen or something. It's really cool. Um, so Canva for nonprofits, I think you have to apply and enter in your, your 501c3 tax ID number to prove you're a nonprofit, but uh, you can you can get the pro version for free. So Canva is a great tool also. Oh, and <laughs> let me actually tell you what Canva does. Uh, Canva is great for graphic design for social media. You can do social media graphics in various sizes. They also are not that bad at editing videos too. I've done a little bit of video editing in Canva before. Um, great for making like pitch decks or presentations for maybe donors or sponsors. Also a, a great use of Canva. All right, are you already using any of these tools? What do you think? Or do you know some other great ones that I didn't mention on this list that are kind of new to the scene and you think deserve a little bit of attention and might be useful for people? Leave those in the comments below. Don't spam my comments, but if you have genuine good ideas, you can leave those in the comments below. If you're in the process of starting a nonprofit or maybe even developing a fundraising strategy, check out my website, foundertofulltime.com. I have two online courses and some blog articles to help folks who are in that phase of starting a nonprofit and developing their fundraising strategy. Um, it's uh, it's been, I think, very helpful for some of my students in there um, who will tell you that it's, uh, you know, it's really confusing when you're getting started. So my courses can help really clarify things for you. Um, my newsletter, I mentioned that one before. Link is below this video. Subscribe to get additional tips, strategy, and funding opportunities that I come across. And finally, I have a group on Facebook called Change the World or Bust. There's over 5,000 people in there and you too can be one of them. <laughs> so come on and join us over there and tell us what you're doing to make a social impact in this world and let's all grow our impact together. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.